Hada! It's me, DeoGenZ, still stuffed up as you could hear slash see, but uh, that's not a way to go anywhere, so let's go up these stairs, see if there's anything good. I'm betting there's a lot more battles to go. Yeah, did a little bit of a miscalculation. I said, mm, yeah, today, on yesterday's video, we're gonna face Mirror B. Will I be bullshitting you? Because we're not. No, we're gonna get extra training first and de shadowization. And you wanna know something funny? The original length of this episode was something like 20 minutes. What? And nobody has 20 minutes. I mean, it's YouTube. All right, let's be realistic. Even when my favorite uh, rap artist, Graydon Square, does his GU radio uh, hour long podcast, it takes a while for me to fully watch the show because. You know, it's YouTube, it's not on the go. Thankfully, he put it on uh, iTunes, which I really gotta get to doing with my Gaming Gauntlet, which will return! Happy news, happy news. 2013, Gaming Gauntlet will come back, but we're gonna come back in a way that you've never seen before. See, now I've got live streaming capabilities, so I've tested it out a couple times on some successful 24-hour and 12-hour and a couple-hour live streams, so I know it's gonna work. So, what we're gonna do is do the Gaming Gauntlet live, so you guys could actually interact with me while I'm playing games, while I'm answering viewer mail, all that kind of good stuff. But, you know, the, the hour format for YouTube is rough if you're not expecting it. You know, if you're saying, like, I'm watching a walkthrough right now, but this douchebag, Gen Z, posts, like, fucking 20-minute episodes each time. Like, dude, do you love the sound of your voice that much that you think you need 20 minutes every fucking time? No, no, you don't. You really don't. Because it just wastes everybody's patience, and you got other stuff to do. Let's be honest, right? I mean... It's good enough that you could manage 10 minutes for me, you know, it, it, it's really rude, rather, for me to try and ask so much more of you. But uh, thanks to YouTube Analytics, I, I got that concept pretty quickly. You know, after people are leaving after four minutes, I'm like, oh, well, why am I even bothering, you know? It just wastes my breath, it wastes the time of the viewers, and, you know, truth be told, I can make a lot more episodes quicker if they're not so fucking long. You know, because if it's long, it's like 20 minutes of me just rambling. Which, you know, I don't mind doing, but... Like I said before, your attention spans are oh so thin and delicate, so I don't want to drop them on, uh, on the pavement like an iPad face down with no protection. You know, I, that, that would be not so good. So, short little stories, short little episodes, and things that you can count on for a guide to get you through this game, because that's what you want. You know, you, you could see in that hyperspeed what I'm choosing, all the moves and all that goodness. You don't need to, you don't need to see every battle, every battle at full length. Because most of these peeps don't even have shadow pokes, so what's the point? I don't know why I thought there was an item over there. Doble checking. Aha! There's a dude. A dude with Pokemon that are, let's see, are shadowy? Come on, Chi. Tell me. Yes, a Swablu. That's superior. I really wouldn't care for a Lotad that's shadowy because they're all too common in the third generation games just by going out into the wilds. You know, I don't remember if there was a marshland. I know there was a, there was a safari zone area that might have had some marshy areas back in the third gen. But I'm just thinking for future developments, if you're going to revamp and redo the third gen, which I hear a lot of rumors that Nintendo would do. And, uh, yeah, Nintendo, I, I'm still willing to buy stuff that's old, just repackaged. You know, I, I can't complain fully. I really can't. I, you know, I love nostalgia. And Heart Gold and Soul Silver were masterful. And it was so great to go back to those games and, you know, have all the uh, adventures in those lands again in the current DS generation. I still kind of like Heart Gold, Soul Silver better than Black White and Black White the sequels, but you know that's that's not based on what game features they've done. That's based on me being uh, introduced to gaming overall by Pokemon Crystal. So of course I'm gonna have a, a big connection with the Johto journeys. But it would be badass if they had a Lotad Marsh where you'd hop across different lily pads that are large, and then uh, some of them might actually be Lotads or, or something of that nature. I don't know, I, when I see or hear any rumors about a Pokemon remake, I always hope that they're going to integrate Pokemon into the overworld a lot more than just battling. You know, we definitely got that kind of story-slash-lecture with Team Plasma and the hypocrisies of them 
uh, pilfering Pokemon for their own power. You know, that's that's grokked already. I think we've already established that uh, it's really not the best thing to just be collecting countless amounts of Pokemon and then letting them rot away in the box. If you don't believe me, then go check out Life in the Box, which is a series I do on uh, on Planet Poke. And that will pretty much express how crappy it is to be forgotten and lonesome in a in a cold, cold electronic box where you'll never see the light of day again. And that's uh, it's kind of what we do with our Pokemon, you know? That's, uh, we collect all these shadow pokes, we heal them, and then they're healed, and then it's like, well, if you don't have the right EVs, if you don't have the nature, if you're hardcore metagame master like me, which I'm so not a master, I'm just a, a metagamer in, in training, but you know that it, it's going to be kind of useless to you. So you might as well leave that Pokemon in the box. If it's lucky, it might get taken out to go be bred by a Ditto, you know, but that's, that's the luckiest of them all. Most of them just rot away for eternity until the internal battery runs dry and they're completely forgotten about or the save files just erased and they never, ever get out of the box again. That's why I thought it'd be such a funny concept to animate, which, uh, you know, go check it out, Life in the Box. You, you wonder if you YouTube search it at this point, if it would come up. I don't know if it has enough views to do that. Love the design of this underground cave system. You know, it starts out like a spelunking area. And this, I believe, is the way to mirror B, so I don't think we've actually battled everyone yet. That's why I said I was bullshitting you in the first previous episode to this. You know, I, I really did not mean we're going to go for mirror B today, even though I said that. I did not know how many more trainers were left. So, we're going to go versus them. you got to have as much experience when taking on the bosses as possible. That's something very cool about this game, other than the design of this... Uh, a derelict, destroyed cave system that goes far deeper than uh, you would suspect. It actually looks kind of familiar, kind of reminiscent of old Aperture, if you guys played Portal 2. If not, I'll say no more, because that is a marvelous game. Everybody who has Steam should have that game. You know, of course, unless your computer can't take the extreme awesome of graphics, which is, is possible. It's just very new and recent to me that I could have a computer that takes all these games like a champ. But even it sometimes has troubles. Yeah, you know, it's... Yeah, I guess it's three years old by this point. Two years, yeah, it's, it's going on three years soon. I don't think uh, a computer should have a three-year lifespan. I mean, it's technology. It's not like I'm, you know, taking it out swimming with me or anything. It's not like I'm jogging with my computer, but... It's had so much shit happen to it. It's had the hard drive fail. It's had the fans get clawed, because, you know, cats are... <sighs> cats. You know, I, I'm not going to have cats when I get older. I, I decided that. I've had plenty of cats as a child, and I've I done plenty of litter boxes, learned about toxoplasmosis in biology this past semester, which is a, this microorganism, this protist that lives in their poop. And what it does is it's kind of a, it's kind of a trick failsafe so that cats can eat all the time. Uh, whatever is in their urine somehow it attracts, the, you know, this, with this parasite, it attracts rats to it, and then the cats can eat them. But the infected rats eaten by the cats keep this protist, uh, keep its life cycle going so that, uh, you know, even people, even other mammals are, uh, you know, they get this toxoplasmosis too. And we don't really know what it does to people, it's just recently found that, oh shit, we're affected by this too? No, cr no kidding me. Um, but, you know, I could only imagine if it warps the minds of rats to go to the slaughter, I, I could only imagine what it does to humans, so fuck cats, you know, fuck cats and their fur getting caught in your fan, fuck cats and their shitting everywhere, or they're throwing your precious deoxys on your, uh, on your dresser onto the ground so they could break it and then look at you like, what? You, you didn't wake up fast enough, or, oh, how about the time I thought I could m maybe get a nap and maybe sleep late and my fucking cat went crazy and he scratched my eye out almost my right eye, it just like, right underneath it. Seriously, if he was a centimeter more up, he would have fucking clawed my eye out. And that was all because he was hungry. Yeah, so he couldn't fucking wait for me to wake up. He's like, you know what? I'm just gonna be a nice little alarm and, you know, there's no snooze button for claws. So, slash his eye out. Maybe he'll get the point. Feed me, mofo. Don't sleep late. So, fuck cats, you know? I really, I'm done with them. So done. But going back to the computer, you know, this is, uh, I don't even know what. I got on one tangent onto the next tangent onto the next tangent, but the original tangent was, besides the beautiful designs that look like Aperture, the bosses in this game are excellent. 
You know, it's not the traditional Pokemon, eight badges, eight bosses to go kick ass on. It's these shady guys who have uh, very eccentric personalities, as we've, as we've already seen and heard with Mirror B, the Afro King slash Queen. Still, that you know, some of these characters that Pokemon come up with seem gender neutral to me. I, I can't tell. Which is fine, because they're going to stay in the digital realm, I don't have to know. But, you know, not only the personality, but the, the difficulty levels of them are immense. You know, Mirror B is a first test at how strong and how well disciplined your training throughout these caves can be. If you went ahead earlier in the video and just went straight to Mirror B, I don't know how you'd fare. Unless you had a lot of experience in the battle square in Pyrite Town, you know, maybe you would fare a bit better than those who just went right to it, but seriously guys, I recommend just do every battle that you can. You know, not only are you gonna potentially miss shadow pokes if you don't, but you need the experience, and you also need to get rid of the shadow meter on all the shadow pokes that we've claimed. So for all seriousness, I'm telling you, tomorrow, we're taking down Mirror B.